for accuracy, for craftsmanship, Grand Seiko has for a long time beaten pretty well everybody. Grand Seiko has nine new pieces. Introducing them here, the Washes and Wonder Geneva 2024. Let's get down into them because we're gonna see a, a complete staircase of offerings in terms of price. And I think that's important. Entry level, all the way to crazy. So, Joe, walk us through it. Let's Absolutely, go. I'd be very happy to. So we're introducing this year a new addition to our sports collection, which is a uh, 44 millimeter triple time zone GMT. So, I mean, a GMT, 44, monster beast. Like yeah. you're making a statement, right? <laughs> And price well, very point? wearable. Uh, it's going to be six thousand eight hundred. Okay, a GMT for under seven thousand dollars, with all of the spectacular polishing known for Grand Seiko steel piece. Right? Yes, yes, stainless so, steel. Just in case you don't know, the polishing of what Grand Seiko does on steel and on every other material is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Not only is the crunch, we talked about that in detail, but the polish on every aspect of a piece is incredible. So sports, jeans, white t-shirt, all the way to a tuxedo. Can't go wrong with this. Absolutely. Nice, okay. I'm giving you uh, 9.26 for this one. Ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so next on the list, we have another GMT, but this model is a bit more of an aggressive design, still 44 millimeter. Yeah. And you were talking about our acclaimed uh, Zeratsu polishing. Yes. And so this is a bit more tricky to polish. You're gonna Why see- Why is that? Why is that, Joe? This highly oh, angular Oh, I see a case. lot of angular stuff going on there. That's a little off piste for Grand Seiko, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's certainly our most bold and aggressive yeah, design. Yeah, we call yeah. it the Tokyo Lion. So this is, uh, you know, this is coming with ferocity at you. Yeah, look at that. Also, the bezel is a little thinner, more traditional. This is like a diamond. It's really... Uh... Exactly. And that's a, that's really the premise of creating this complex case design is to get the, the effect of a diamond, right? The more facets there are, the more perfectly polished it is, the more brilliant it's Very, sparkles. very, very attractive. Tough call between these two. It's difficult. Price so point? This one will be uh, 10400 A little more expensive, but boy, you ever get your value on this. These, these <laughs> angles uh, make it a little more interesting in some ways. It'll be tough when you're sitting there in the store looking between these two pieces. You gotta reach a little farther on price point. True. But this is hard to, to walk out and say, I didn't <laughs> take that. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. One of the beauties of this one is that you have an open case back with our Spring Drive 9R65 caliber. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one is a closed case back with our 9S85 high beat GMT caliber. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Two winners. I'm going to give you a 9.8 on it. Oh, man. All right. We're scoring high today. Yeah, I think you are. <laughs> Those are two great entrants. No question. So next on the list is from our Evolution 9 collection, which is quickly becoming our most renowned famous collection. Famous for dials, famous for dials. Indeed, and you know the white birch. This yes, is one of our most yes, popular yes, designs yes. nowadays. Uh, same case and bracelet design. However, new dial and also new material. So what are we talking about on the material? So this is what we call ever brilliant stainless steel. Ever brilliant stainless wow, steel. Wow, that dial really, really. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it, beautiful. It captivates you. Look it's at the a, polish. It draws you in right away. Yeah, it does. My goodness. You know, the thing about these pieces, and particularly this one, the digital image on your phone does not do justice. Never. To, to what this is. Not, not a chance, unfortunately. So before we come back to the steel, the well, dial Before on we this, leave it, what's the price point <laughs> on this? this? This one will be 10400 as well. Yeah, that is a really beautiful, beautiful watch. Well, for what this is, my friend, this is a 10. That, that awesome. it really is. I mean, it is a totally classic forever piece. <laughs> I mean, this is, it, it works for everything. It's gonna be a sports piece. It's right. gonna work with your tuxedo, as I always do the analogy between jeans and a black tux. I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah, and one of the best parts is this new ever brilliant steel. Yeah. So you were noticing the polishing, it might be a little more brighter and, and whiter in this uh, particular yeah. model. The benefit of this ever brilliant steel is its highest corrosion resistance for steel used in the watch industry today. You know so, this year. Yeah, uh, new introduced uh, in only a few models thus far, yeah. but new to this design this year. Got it. So okay. very nice. Very Fantastic. exciting one. Let's keep the hits a coming. 
All right. So I didn't mention this is unfortunately only limited to 1,000 pieces worldwide. So. Okay, that sucks. A downside. I'm sorry. That sucks. I hate to disappoint. So, what are you going to do? How many? How many to the Americas? How many to Asia? What's going to happen? So you know, I mean, uh, you know, as, as typical because Grand Seiko was sold for 50 years in Japan before anywhere it. else. Let's Japan not hoard gets the, the bulk. And of course, it's a. Th I mean. I said it's number one watch, but now you know why. Everybody wants it. Yes, and you know the U.S. is our, our second largest market now, yeah. so we we have a great opportunity there as well. But I, sadly, it still will not be enough. Is uh, is the disappointment? Okay. I'm gonna probably disappoint you again with the next one. Let's see it. All right. So in 18 karat rose gold, we have a recreation of our first Grand Seiko from 1960. But for the first time, we're doing a combination of rose wow, gold. Wow, that dial's crazy. With the navy that blue. dial was in the '60s. I don't think so. No, this is a new uh, new dial for for this uh, watches and wonders. So this dial is uh, you know the first navy a combination with rose gold. Wow, uh, all that's the stunning. All the markers are rose gold, so that's signified by the little star at the six o'clock. Yeah, and then uh, if you look at the closely at the Grand Seiko logo, that's actually engraved into the dial. That is stunning. Price point. Uh, it's going to be twenty six thousand five hundred. Not bad for. And I will add that in the last couple of years, yellow gold is on fire. Yes. And it was out of favor seven years ago. It's you know it's uh, always changing, right? You have to. be Yeah, ready. but I mean, if you don't have gold in your portfolio, now's the time. And this piece is crazy. That is just stunning. So now comes for the disappointment. Only fifty pieces are going to be made for the world. <laughs> <laughs> But for those 50, you get it on the blue navy strap, and it also includes the, the brown strap as well. <laughs> 50? Yeah. Again, it doesn't translate from digital to physical because this is off the charts. Thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful. I know you're a dial guy. No, I'm a dial guy, but this is doing some funky chicken stuff with the light. <laughs> I don't want to take away from this one. Okay, okay. But, I, but I, if I you think that. that's an amazing dial. I do, actually. Mr. Wonderful here, no one needs a watch, but everybody wants one. Why? Because it marks a moment of time in your life. Many watches appreciate in value over time. That's why I created WonderCare. Want to learn more about insuring your watch? Go to wondercare.com. I, I want you to play with this one in the light. Yeah. Now, this year, you know, this is the Tokyo Lion design, which I just showed you uh, with a GMT. But coming to the Americas? Yes. Okay. And limited to 700 pieces. So yeah. disappointing, but not as bad as 50, right? So 700 pieces. But this is an entirely new dial manufacturing process. And we process. have that new angular case that we've Correct. already highlighted. Exactly. So the new polishing. That's fantastic. But for a dial guy, we need to talk about the yeah. dial on this one. So I want you to rotate that around as much as you can and pay very close attention to the color. Wow, that is crazy. So the Orange, red, fire, everything going on here. Yes. And uh, so thanks to a new patented dial quite manufacturing a, quite a technique. Quite a texture to it. Yes. What is that? So we call the lion's mane. It's actually the same texture as we're using on the GMT. Yeah. But the color is a totally new application that's, uh, as I mentioned, a patented process. Well, I would process. say colors. Yes. Because there, there's, <laughs> the the there's a lot going on here. So this optical multi-layer coating is basically uh, multiple layers of a nanofilm that are done in basically a PVD process. But because of the way that each of these layers react with light, you get a different effect as you start to change the degree of the angle that you're looking at the dial. It's so, spectacular. As you said, yeah. orange, you know, like a burnt orange Price or red. Uh, this one's going to be 13400 Yeah. Well, I'm, look, I'm expecting it to be more expensive, but it's a beautiful application. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, That's yeah. great. From orange to red and even to the magenta. So I'm kind of color. moving up the feeding chain of price. Yeah. Absolutely. Down at sub seven, and here we are at 13, but some incredible dials. So, these are more classic coming up here. Yes. Yeah, so, with this watch, I really want you to pay attention to the crunch. That's what this watch was made for. Yeah. Well, as I've said, you're legendary for the crunch. Oh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> So this watch is uh, our Ninus A4 caliber. We just introduced for Watches and Wonders, and it's based on our caliber Ninus A5, which we use on our white birch model that's yeah. been around, uh, the movement's been around since uh, 2020. We introduced this model in 2021. And the oscillating weight, obviously, it's automatic. Percent but it's definitely got the crunch, and it's a beautifully polished watch, and the dial has such incredible texture, it's almost 3D. Yeah. It's got a meteorite-esque to it, you know? <laughs> 
It's beautiful. That's a spectacular so, piece. Again, what the price is? Uh, this one will be 10700 Very affordable. It's yeah. nice. And you have a gold version? Yeah, so this will be continuous production, thankfully. And then for the limited edition model, we'll do only 80 pieces in 18 karat rose gold with the indices also so indicated by that star. Limited. The gold pops like crazy. I mean, I love it. And it's just, that's beautiful. Yellow gold, this is rose, it's beautiful. It just pops beautifully. Love these. The, the price on this? So this one will be 45,000. Okay, that's a serious chunk. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. Obviously, with rose gold, what are you going to do? Yep, you can see there's a lot of flat surfaces, sharp angles, and uh, it's a very refined. So there's a case. there's a huge spread of price points and offerings here. Yes, a lot of new ideas for 2024, and we can go higher. One more. <laughs> yes, I have a feeling this is going to be a, a rather unique piece because yes. it's been speaking to me here for the last few minutes, and since it can be quite loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So please go ahead. So, uh, so let's talk about this. I yeah. think I saw this being manufactured in the headquarters in Tokyo or something very similar to it. Yes. So you may recall in 2022, we introduced our very first mechanical complication watch mm -hmm. known as Kodo. Uh, so this watch came to market uh, <laughs> ferociously. Uh, we experienced a, a totally new dynamic for Grand Seiko. We were getting customers from every place you can think of. And that we never had met before trying to purchase this watch. And uh, the Kodo was one of the most successful launches that we've ever had. It was also one of the most intriguing watches that we've ever created. It's the very first skeletonized watch in Grand Seiko. So you have a lot to look at in the dial. But uh, well, I mean, the, the skeleton really showcases the perfection of what you've done here in terms of manufacturing skills. Absolutely. I mean, this is a beautiful skeleton watch with a tourbillon happening at the same time. Yes. I mean, this is the whole thing about dials. That's my whole point. You have to tell a story. People look at that and say, what is that? Like, what is going on there? Absolutely. What planet did this watch come from? <laughs> this so the, what's going on there is you see this. There's six different arms within the mechanism yeah. right around the six o'clock. So three of the arms are moving at a sweep motion, which is at uh, four hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. And then there's another set of three arms that seem to be chasing the ones that are sweeping, but it jumps from them. second to second. Right. Right. The chase that will never end because it will never catch it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's our constant force mechanism ticking every second. And if you listen to the watch, that's another beauty of this is the sound is totally unique in the world. And uh, that's why we named it Kodo. Oh, I see. Okay. Because the Kodo means heartbeat in Japanese. And we wanted to pay tribute to the unique heartbeat of this watch. Yeah, that is nuts. It's quite something. What does this cost? So this one will be $365,000. $365,000. So yes. that is a serious commitment, but an incredibly collectible watch. Absolutely. How many pieces are you making? Uh, it'll be a total of 20. So there were 20 of the original, and we'll do a continuing uh, 20 of this that will probably take us several years to complete production. Yeah. It's uh, you know still in the process on the other uh, the previous 20, but uh, it's beautiful. Finishing up hopefully soon. I'm just. There's one more, one more piece. These are eight. What's the what's the ninth? So the ninth is uh, we have on our display is a eight piece limited edition. <laughs> so the most even explosive. fewer. Yes, yes. So we wanted to take uh, our high horology elements from some of our best craftsmen and kind of combine them into one high horology piece that also happens to be high jewelry. So we use our spring drive eight day power reserve, yeah. which is crafted in our micro artist studio. So completely hand finished, just like Kodo is completely hand finished. Um, the movement is meticulously made and finished. And then you have the craft of creating this uh, Tokyo lion design. Remember how I was explaining how complex it is? Yeah, yeah. In platinum is 10 times more. You know, this, so this is, is a the very next watch. level. This is a combination of platinum with a uh, brilliant hard titanium exterior shroud of armor. That is just a PS de resistance for 2024. <laughs> thank you. Joe, thank you so much. It was a great ride through this incredible ladder of value. Well, thank you, with Kevin. It's always five my pieces pleasure. on the entry level side, which are insane. Yeah. So, great right to hear. Thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. So I'm with the CEO of the Americas here, really is mapped out what the brand's gonna look like in 2024. That's why everybody's here at the show. Rich, tell us where you're going with Grand Seiko. To tell you where we're going with Grand Seiko, Kevin, I would like to backtrack a little bit and go back to where we come from. Um, you know that Grand Seiko was born in 1960. 
and it was meant to be the ultimate Japanese timepiece made by, by our company, Seiko. And we went through a journey of 50 years being sold only in Japan. Don Seiko has always been the gem of the company, the gem of the look, the, the watchmaking made, it, made in Japan. We, uh, in 2010, introduced the brand in Basel Fair to become a global brand. And it took, I would say, six years to redefine the brand and relaunch it in 2017 as an independent brand. And we removed Seiko from the dial, replacing it at 12 o'clock by Grand Seiko. From 2017 onwards, pioneering the brand from the US market for global expansion, we went from being maybe the least recognized brand in the watchmaking, in the luxury watchmaking, in the $5,000 to $10,000 price point to become one of the most surprising and most relevant brand, bringing not only an additional philosophy of product to the equation of the luxury watchmaking, because if we talk about philosophy of watchmaking, the Japanese master of craftsmanship overall, and they always push the limits above the excellence. They have been trained by Philippe Dufour on the polishing technique, as you know. The humidity of the Japanese will never let them say it. We're French, we're American, we can say whatever we want, and I'm ready to tell you, <laughs> they have reached an excellent level of, of the expectation we had, and I had personally when I started with a brand, to be a luxury brand recognized with the name Seiko, Grand Seiko, <clears throat> five to ten thousand dollars, offering a fantastic collection of products that are finished with finishing close to none. Um, this period of time, 2017 to 2023, we went from be you know in the price point of five thousand dollars to become one of the most recognized brands in the seven eight thousand dollars price point. But we are very strongly attached to our core price point, five to seven thousand dollars, and we are mastering with some iconic pieces like the snowflake that you know, the shunbun that you know, and those watches are in the sixty-five hundred. You're talking about the manufacturing of the dial, which Grand Seiko has become legendary for. Yes, absolutely. the dials are extraordinary, unique. Very few people can emulate them. But here's the number one question I get everywhere around the world, and we have viewers all around the world, and I think you should answer this. What's the difference between Seiko and Grand Seiko? There's some confusion about that. Mm -hmm. What's, and you should know the answer to that. Now we're listening. What's the difference? It's an excellent question. Well, Seiko is to be the ultimate luxury watch made by our Japanese company, our company in Japan. Um, it's coming from all the quality and the craftsmanship that Seiko has developed over the 160 plus years uh, of the company. We have um, selected this very fine group of watchmakers to uh, build this ultimate beautiful uh, timepiece. So the watchmakers at Seiko are not the same as in Grand Seiko? They are not they have to receive a training and it takes about 10 years for a Seiko watchmaker to become a non-Seiko watchmaker. So the never-ending question, what's the difference between Seiko, which is so well known? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many, it, it's part of the iconic brand worldwide, the Seiko watch, but then Grand Seiko is a whole different world. It's different. And, I, and, and, and unless you understand the difference, you know, you have to see and hold the piece. But again, the value of the brand is bringing new ownership, new collectors, getting incredible quality and having a spectacular experience. And it keeps them in the family because now say Grand Seiko, you can start Seiko, you can get to Grand Seiko, but then you can spend an immense investment and have incredible pieces made in Japan. Well, I, I was going to say, you can't say it, but I can. Sometimes these watches kick the ass out of their competitors that are supposed to be the most accurate watches in the world most of the time, not sometimes. There's been many contests for accuracy over the decades and Seiko never loses. So think about that. I gotta be careful because I'm the Switzerland of watches, but I'm well aware of the actual data. For accuracy, for craftsmanship, Grand Seiko has for a long time beaten pretty well everybody. Just saying, because it's true. 
I'm known for the truth. It's the truth. It's not publicized too much, but if you go back, Google this yourself. This is ass-kicking territory. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. You got it.